بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ٹو ڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ہیو لیکچر فائیو آف فنکشنل انگلش ون لیکچر فائیو از اباؤٹ ریگریٹس اینڈ اپالوجیز اینڈ یو نو دیٹ دا نیم دا ٹائٹل آف آر کورس از فنکشنل انگلش ون سو ایوری لیکچر از بیسڈ on one of the speech functions that we have to perform. Learning English, learning English grammar is only important when we can actually perform speech fun functions with it. So if uh, you have learned a lot of grammar but you cannot apply it in your practical conversation, uh, it is of very little use. Lecture number five is about regrets and apologies. There are plenty of situations in our life when we regret doing something or when we wished it had not happened. And sometimes we commit mistakes, we make an error and we want to undo it and we can say sorry for it. Um, that is called an apology. So if we have committed something wrong and we feel sorry for it, we want to express it in English, uh, we will learn this skill in this lecture, lecture number five. But before we uh, go into the depth of lecture number five, we look at the real content of lecture number five. Let's first have a quick recap of what we learned in lecture number four. In lecture four, we learned how to use polite expressions of invitations. Lecture four was about extending invitations, accepting invitations, and declining invitations. So uh, we started it with polite expressions of invitations. Then we also learned how to invite others through telephone call. I gave you different practice situations and I gave you some uh, sample dialogues and I asked you to perform those dialogues uh, keeping in mind the practice situations. In lecture number four you learned how to accept an invitation politely and you also learned how to decline or refuse an invitation politely. You looked at various phrases, expressions and you also looked at sample dialogues. Uh, then apart from oral skills, you also learned how to write a short invitation letter or an email. In fact, uh, we also learned how to write an invitation card. Uh, very often we have to compose invitation card for the wedding ceremonies. But in lecture number four you learned what kind of other invitation letters you can write, what kind of other invitation cards you can write. Um, so you looked at various points that are helpful and you also looked at, uh, uh, at, at the guidelines uh, for writing the content of the invitation card. Later on you also learned how to write a short invitation letter or an email. And finally, you learned how to write a follow-up letter or an email once your invitation has been accepted. Uh, we didn't learn how to write a follow-up letter if your invitation has been rejected, uh, but we, we can learn it in the, in the lectures, in the coming lectures. So this is what we learned in lecture number four. Now let's move on to lecture number five. Objectives of lecture number five. 
after completing this lecture and if you follow the instructions in it and if you do all the practice that is recommended in it you should be able to differentiate between regrets and apologies we'll begin with this simple uh, differentiation between regrets and apology then we will learn some expressions of regrets some common useful expressions that are used for regrets similarly in lecture 5 we will also learn various expressions of apology and I have explained apology already by apology we mean saying sorry if we have done something wrong if we have done something inappropriate uh, we often have to say sorry for that in order to correct it, in order to rectify it. Okay, uh, suppose that someone else apologizes to us, someone else says sorry to us for anything that he or she did wrong. Uh, there are two ways we can respond to it. Either we can accept that apology graciously uh, or we can either reject that apology altogether or we can accept that apology ungraciously. Uh, we will learn both these ways how to accept an apology either graciously or ungraciously. I would like to end lecture number five with uh, the written task and you would be supposed, you are supposed to write a letter of apology. A letter of apology is really important because uh, when you have committed a mistake uh, it is better that you apologize in written form. Unfortunately in most of our correspondences we do not give much attention to letter of apology uh, but in reality it is very important. Uh, and uh, if we have professional ethics and if we have any moral codes I think if we have done anything wrong we should uh, we should be able to apologize it in writing okay we begin with uh, differentiating between regret and apology so we are going to look at some sentences and we'll see whether uh, the speaker is expressing regret or whether the speaker is expressing apology. Okay, what does it mean? What does the word regret mean? If something has happened and you would be happier if it had not happened, this means that you regret something bad happened you didn't like it uh, you preferred that it had not happened aap kehte hain kaash aisa na hua hota regret ka matlab bhi hai pachtava jisko aap samajh le so you say uh, kaash aisa na hua hota. For example, let's look at these sentences and try to analyze them. Do that again and you will be sorry. Now in this sentence, uh, we are advising someone. Someone has done something which we didn't like and we wish it had never had happened. So we say do that again and you will be sorry. You will be sorry means you will regret it afterwards. So if you do it again you are going to regret it. You are going to feel sorry about it. So here the word sorry does not mean that uh, I have done anything wrong. It simply means that if you will do that again 
you will feel sorry. So uh, you will feel regretted. Let's look at the second example. If it is not clear, it will be clearer, clear soon. Just be patient. I'm sorry you didn't pass your exam. Better luck next time. So here we are giving a bad news. We are telling someone that he or she didn't pass his or her exam. Now, uh, this is none of our fault. If someone didn't pass the exam, it's not the teacher's fault. You know it. Uh, the students often say, Sir, why did you fail me in this subject? And uh, we often have to remind them that it's not us who have failed them. It's they themselves who have failed the paper. As teachers, uh, we would love all the, all the students to pass. Uh, but some students simply don't pass. They don't even work hard. They don't uh, pay attention to their studies. Um, so you are familiar with this situation. If someone has not passed his exam, you feel sorry about him. But this is not your fault. Uh, so you regret this situation in a sense that uh, you wish it had not happened. Aap kehte hain, kaash aisa na hua hota. But actually it is not, uh, not in your hand. And therefore, uh, you express your fa wish in the second sentence and you say, better luck next time. Better luck next time. I'm sorry you didn't pass your exam. Better luck next time. So you can use uh, this phrase, I'm sorry, in order to express, uh, you express your uh, feeling that you feel sorry for someone um, you, because you have to give a bad news. And in the same way, you're also expressing your wish. You wish that uh, that person has better lex luck next time. Okay, let's look at the next sentence. I'm afraid I can't let you in. The play has started. So you can imagine the situation yourself. Uh, probably you are uh, the in charge of uh, a play somewhere in a theater or maybe uh, yeah in a theater the play has already started there are some visitors uh, some audiences who want to enter into the theater hall and you tell them I'm afraid I can't let you in can't let you in means I can't let you uh, enter and I'm afraid here means I'm sorry. I feel sorry. I regret this situation that I have to stop you. Uh, and why I can't let you in? Because of the rules. Because of the, uh, because of the rules that are set up by the theater, by the manager. And since the play has already started, you don't want other people who are inside the theater uh, to be interrupted. Uh, so you say, I'm afraid I can't let you in. And you remember that uh, we used this phrase, I'm afraid, earlier when we were using it for declining an invitation. So you said, for example, I'm afraid I won't be able to come. I'm afraid I won't be able to join. So I'm afraid here means I'm sorry. Uh, but once again, you are not saying sorry because you have done something wrong or you have committed a mistake. Uh, you simply feel sorry for, for them because uh, they have come, but since they are late and according to the rules, you have to stop them. You don't let them, you don't let them in. So you, see, uh, you feel sorry on their behalf. You feel sorry for them. You don't feel sorry because uh, it is your mistake. So it's not an apology because it's not your mistake. It is simply a regret. You regret this situation. You regret the situation that you have to stop them um, as per rules. 
uh, and you feel sorry about it. So, so far we have learned that you can express regrets by saying, I'm afraid or I'm sorry. And let's look at the next sentence, I'm afraid I can't come. Um, this uh, sentence we've done before, yes, you're right. Uh, when, we, when we were doing inviting others and accepting and declining invitations, in fact, when we were doing declining invitations, uh, we used this phrase, I'm afraid I can't come. So I'm afraid here means I am sorry. Uh, I feel uh, regret. Uh, I, I wish the situation had been different. Uh, but uh, the reality is that uh, it happened, I can't come. Okay, so far we have looked at regrets. Now we look at the second part of our question, which is apology. An apology is when you think you have done something wrong and you admit responsibility for that. So you see, it is different to feel apologized. It is different to feel apology than to feel a regret. Uh, you apologize only when you think that you have done something wrong. And uh, you also take responsibility for that. Let's look at some sentences. I'm sorry that I was late. You see, this time I'm sorry doesn't mean that you regret this situation. It means that you feel that uh, that you have done something wrong, you came late, it was not proper, uh, so you apologize. This time you are not regretting the situation, you are apologizing, you are saying sorry, you are taking the blame on yourself and you are saying, I'm sorry that I was late. Okay. So this time you are not feeling sorry for someone else, you are feeling uh, sorry because you think that you are responsible for it. You are responsible for coming late. I'm sorry that I was so rude. So very often, if you later on realized that you spoke to someone rudely and you shouldn't have done that, uh, you feel sorry. And you don't just feel sorry, you actually want to express that, uh, that feeling of being sorry. So you say, uh, I'm sorry that I was so late. I'm sorry that I was so rude. Similarly, uh, instead of I'm sorry, you can also use other expressions. You can say, I shouldn't have done what I did yesterday. I shouldn't have done. I shouldn't have done means, mujhe aisa nahi karna chahiye tha. This situation is, has already passed. You can't undo it, right? Uh, you have already done it. I shouldn't have done, uh, you, uh, you have past perfect tense here, uh, and you use shouldn't as a moral verb. It means, mujhe aisa nahi karna chahiye tha. I shouldn't have done what I did yesterday. So this is another way to apologize. This is another way to say sorry. Uh, for something that you think that you shouldn't have done, for something that you think you did, uh, uh, did wrong, and since you can't undo it, you want to express your apology. Similarly, you can use another expression, and that is, I hope you can forgive me for coming late. I, ho I hope you can forgive me is uh, an expression of apology. So the point that I'm making here is that regret is when you wish something had not happened, but it is not your responsibility. Something simply happened, it was not your fault, or at least you don't think it was your fault, so you don't need to take the blame for it. Whereas apology is when you think that you have done something wrong and you want to express your feeling of sorry and you want to admit responsibility 
for whatever mistake you have committed. So uh, right from the beginning you should be clear about regret and apology. Now let's look at some expressions, some useful expressions for expressing regrets. Um, regrets as I, I told you earlier is when something bad has happened. Something that you wish had not happened. Uh, so when you announce a bad news you can say I'm sorry or I'm afraid. Uh, these two phrases are very common and I would uh, I would ask you to note them in your phrase book and next time whenever you have to regret whenever you have to express regrets you should use these. Uh, okay we can express regrets uh, to announce a bad news but sometimes we can also express regrets um, or you can say to express wish against present or past reality and for that we use a structure like I wish plus subject plus simple past or I wish or if only plus subject plus past perfect. Uh, right now if you don't understand this structure don't worry simply note it down uh, I'm going to explain it to you. Uh, we express regret when something happened. When something happened either uh, at the moment I am speaking or when something happened in the past. So there is our present reality or past reality. So sometimes we express our wish that something had not happened uh, that is happening now or that has happened earlier. Uh, for present reality we use the first structure here. For present reality we say I wish or we say if only I, uh, I worked hard. For example, suppose that you failed in the exam. So you can regret in the following way. You can say, I wish I had worked harder. I wish, sorry, not had worked. I wish I worked harder. I wish I worked harder. So I wish or if only I, I worked harder. Uh, you can start your sentence with I wish or if only and then you can use the subject and afterwards you can use the simple past form of the verb. So you can say I wish I worked harder. Or if it happened in the past you can say I failed in the exam I wished I had I wish I had worked harder. I failed in the exam I wish I had worked harder. Or you can say, if only I had worked harder. I failed in the exam, if only I had worked harder. Uh, well, uh, I want you to practice these sentences using regrets, but I don't want you to have regrets about this course. And how can you do that? by following the instructions, by following the pieces of advice that I gave you. Uh, so please leave no room for regrets. Instead, you should use, uh, you should practice whatever structures uh, you are learning here so that you don't have to regret afterwards. But if you do have to regret, remember these structures that you can use in real life situations. Okay, uh, now we have learned that after I wish or if only we can use subject and after the subject we need to use the verb form either in past simple or in past perfect tense. If we are expressing regrets about present reality we need to use past simple. 
if we are expressing regrets about a past reality, then we will use past perfect tense. Now, I have uh, seven sentences on the screen here. I would like you to read them and I would like you to use the correct form of the verb given in the bracket. Let's look at the first sentence first. The coach trip to Paris was very exhausting. I wish I fly there instead of taking the coach. Okay. Now, whether you would say, I wish I flew there, second form of the verb, past simple form of the verb, or whether you would say, I wish I had flown there instead of taking the coach. And in this case, it would be past perfect tense. So what's your answer? Whether you would say, I wish I flew there instead of taking the coach, or you would say, I wish I had flown there instead of taking the coach. Well, uh, look at the first sentence. The coach trip to Paris was very exhausting. Was very exhausting means that it was a past reality. So, yes, you guessed it right. Because it was a past reality, we need to use the past perfect form of the verb here. So we would say, the coach trip to Paris was very exhausting. I wish I had flown there instead of taking the coach. اس کا اردو میں ترجمہ ہوگا کہ پیرس جانے کے لیے کوچ ٹرپ جو ہے وہ بڑی تھکا دینے والی تھی کاش میں نے کوچ کی بجائے تیارے سے سفر کیا ہوتا ہوای جہاز سے سفر کیا ہوتا آئی ویش کی جگہ آپ ایف آنلی بھی کہہ سکتے ہیں The coach trip to Paris was very exhausting If only I had flown there instead of taking the coach So you understand why we are using past perfect tense here because uh, this was a past reality the coach trip to Paris was very exhausting was very exhausting means it is a past reality and when we regret or when you when we regret about a past reality we need to use past perfect tense of the verb after I wish I let's look at the second sentence I have three books to study for my next exam. I wish I some of them last summer. Now whether you would say I wish I read some of them last summer or I wish I had read some of them last summer. Think about it. Yes, you are right. Uh, we will say I wish I read some of them last summer. I wish I read some of them last summer. And why is it so? Because look at the first part of the sentence. I have three books to study for my next exam. I have three books to study. Have is present reality. We are not saying I have had three books to study. We are not saying I had three books to study. Since it is present reality, we will we'll say, I wish I read some of them last summer. So I repeat, the correct form would be, I have three books to study for my next exam. I wish I read some of them last summer. Sentence number three, I'm hungry now. I can't concentrate on my lesson. If only I take some breakfast this morning. So how would you uh, use the correct form of verb here? What would be the correct form of verb here? If only I took some breakfast this morning or if only I had taken some breakfast this morning. What's your answer? Yes, you are right. I'm hungry now suggests that it is present reality. So we need to say if only I took some breakfast this morning. If only I took some breakfast this morning. I, I read out the complete sentence. I'm hungry now. I can't concentrate on my lesson. If only I took some breakfast this morning. So, 
because we are talking about present reality we will use past simple form after I wish okay we move on to sentence number four I wish I not stay up late last night I feel very tired now I wish I not stay up late last night I feel very tired now so whether you would say I wish I had not stayed up or you would say I wish I did not stay up did not stay up would be past simple had not stayed up would be past perfect so what's your answer yes you are right again um, the correct answer is I wish I did not stay up last night why because in the second uh, sentence we are saying I feel very tired now now is present reality therefore I would say I wish I did not stay up late last night okay we move on to sentence number five I have lost my keys I wish I could remember where I put them or I wish I uh, could have remembered where I put them but I can't I have lost my keys but I can't uh, I have lost my keys is a past reality now okay. I have lost my keys is uh, present simple uh, sorry present perfect tense sorry it's not uh, past reality again it is present reality because I have lost my keys and in the end I say but I can't I'm not saying but I couldn't so it is present reality and therefore I would say I wish I could remember where I put them I wish I could remember where I put them okay we'll move on to number six there is no rain in our region this winter I wish it rained these days or I wish it had rained these days but it has been sunny okay again uh, but it has been sunny means it is past reality it has been sunny means it has been sunny so far uh, so we are talking about past reality therefore we would say I wish it had rained these days we would use uh, past perfect tense Uh, similarly in the last sentence we I have got 14 out of 20 in my English test I wish I had more or I wish I have had more uh, I would prefer I have had more because I have got is a past reality now so the simple rule is that whenever we talk about present reality we used past simple form after I wish I or if only I and whenever we talk about past reality we uh, use I wish I had and then third form of the verb or if only I had and then third form of the verb so what we need to learn here is that uh, we use past simple form or past perfect form after I wish or if only and this kind of form is called unreal past actually uh, because it is only our wish it didn't really happen we wish it had happened we wish it happened but it actually didn't happen therefore it is called unreal past and this unreal past actually depends on uh, reality what really happened if reality is in present we use unreal past simple if reality is in uh, past we used past perfect in uh, unreal well uh, I hope I haven't confused you 
if you think that this structure is really very difficult for you to follow, uh, you can leave it alone and we can move on to the next slide and uh, you can practice it later on. Now we come back to expressions for using apologies. We have already learnt various expressions to use uh, to regret and we talked about two situations in which we use expressions of regret. One is when we feel sorry or when, um, when we feel sorry that something regrettable happened. And second is when we express our wish that it had not happened this way. Uh, now we are going to talk about expressing apologies. To admit responsibility, we can use apologies as we have learned earlier. An apology is when you think that you have done something wrong and you admit responsibility for that action. Uh, so the popular expressions are, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I came late, I'm sorry I kept you waiting, I'm sorry I didn't inform you earlier. So in all these sentences, I'm using I'm sorry in order to apologize, in order to say sorry for something that I have done wrong. Uh, in more formal situations, I can say, I really must apologize. I really must apologize. For example, I can say, I really must apologize for coming late. I really must apologize for not meeting the appointment. I really must apologize for speaking to you like this. Okay, the next sentence is, Next expression is, please forgive me for, so you can say, please forgive me for coming late. Please forgive me for uh, not meeting the appointment. Okay, another formal way of expressing apology is, I owe an apology for. I owe an apology for. So you can say, I owe an apology for coming late. You must have realized one thing that after for we can use the ing form of the verb. So we can say please forgive me for coming late or we can say I owe an apology for coming late or even for earlier sentence uh, expressions I can say I really must apologize for coming late. Okay we'll move on move on to the next expression which is I accept full responsibility for so you can say I accept full responsibility for making the mistake I accept full responsibility for misinforming you I accept full responsibility for uh, for not informing you in proper time Similarly, you can say, I feel so ashamed for uh, coming late. I feel so ashamed for telling a lie. Uh, in informal situations, we can also use such phrases as, it was quite stupid of me to. In fact, you can use it in uh, formal situations as well. You can say, it was quite stupid of me to tell a lie. It was quite stupid of me to come late. It was quite foolish of me to talk to you like this. So you can say um, you need to use the first form of the verb after to, to talk to you like this, to keep you waiting, to tell you a lie. So it was quite stupid of me to tell you a lie. Okay, we move on. And here are some other expressions for expressing apologies. Apologies can be informal. Like, I'm really sorry about this. Look, I know I was wrong. It's my fault. I can't apologize enough for forgetting the tickets. So these are some sentences 
through which you can express informal apologies. Uh, for formal apologies, we often use the noun apology or the verb apologize. Uh, for example, look at the following sentences. Mr. Jones sends his deepest apologies for not attending the meeting. Mr. Jones sends his deepest apologies for not attending the meeting. Right? Very often in the meeting, someone is not able to come and he simply, he or she simply sends uh, apologies and uh, someone else can read out this uh, sentence on his or her behalf. So you can say Mr. Jones sends his deepest apologies for not attending the meeting. Similarly we can say we apologize for the delay in answering your call. We apologize for the delay in answering your call. So this time you have uh, the verb apologize and that makes it formal. We can also say, please accept our most sincere apologies for this error. You must have noticed one thing, uh, that although we use the word sincere and deepest apologies, but uh, we know that in formal situations, sometimes uh, it is merely uh, lip service. What I mean by lip service is that people only say it. They, uh, they, uh, they don't really mean it. Uh, I hope you understand what I mean. Uh, for example, you know, uh, usually the service providers, uh, instead of correcting their behavior or instead of uh, rectifying the error, it is easy for them just to say, please accept our most sincere apologies for this error. Because it is easier to express apologies than to rectify the situation itself. Uh, anyway, let's not talk about it. Uh, here, our purpose is only to learn these expressions to, uh, to become proficient speaker, speakers of English. Okay. Normally, when we apologize uh, for some reason, um, there are certain other expressions that go along with the apologies. Apologies are not uh, alone. Uh, sometimes we add excuses to it. For example, you see, um, you are quite familiar to this. Uh, I was so hungry, I ate the rest of the cake. I'm sorry. I'm sorry is uh, the apology. Uh, but along with it, we have an excuse. The excuse could come before the apology or it could come after the apology. I was so hungry, I ate the rest of the cake. I'm sorry. And you know that this is just an excuse. You are familiar with the second kind of excuse. Uh, I'm sorry about my homework teacher. The goat ate it. Uh, you know that students, they come up with sometimes very creative uh, excuses. Uh, as far as their communication skill is concerned, uh, this is something to be appreciated because they have learned uh, to use excuses appropriately in, in various situations. But of course, as teachers, we don't want them to come up with lame excuses. We want them to do their work seriously. Anyway, um, here if you analyze this sentence, I'm sorry about my homework teacher, the goat ate it. So first part of the sentence, I'm sorry about my homework teacher, expresses the student's apology. And the second part of the sentence, the goat ate it, uh, is an excuse. So usually we add an excuse before or after our apology. Okay. Um, sometimes we don't add an excuse to our apology. Instead, we, uh, we express the fact that it was unintentional. Uh, so we say that we are sorry and then we add that it was not intentional. 
uh, I did it just by mistake. I didn't mean any harm. For example, look at the next sentence. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you means that I did not intentionally scare you. Scare you means frighten you. I did not intentionally frighten you. Uh, I didn't mean to scare you means uh, that it was not my intention to scare you. I'm sorry expresses apology. I didn't mean to scare you expresses the fact that this was, uh, this was unintentional. So in informal situation, we can use it. Uh, whereas formal situations require such kind of sentences. We deeply regret any inconvenience as this was not our intention. So you see that second part of the sentence here expresses the fact that it was in con uh, the inconvenience was unintentional. Okay, sometimes in order to express the fact that uh, it was unintentional, rather than using such phrases as I didn't mean to or it was not our intention, I simply use, uh, we simply use the question form. For example, if I say, oh, am I late? I'm sorry. Am I late? Uh, the question am I late simply suggests that uh, if I am late, uh, I am not aware of it. Uh, I didn't do it intentionally. Is this your seat? Oh, I do apologize. So is this your seat suggests the fact that I didn't do it intentionally. It was merely an accident. I didn't know it was your seat. So I sat down on it. So I do apologize. Did I tread on your foot? I'm sorry. Are you alright? So this time uh, we have three things actually. Did I tread on your foot is a question and it suggests that it was not my uh, intention. It was merely an accident. I'm sorry is used to express apology. Are you alright is to show my concern about the well-being of the victim. Okay. Um, so you see usually when we use these apologies we shouldn't just say I'm sorry. We should add something to it. If we don't have any excuse, we should at least state the fact that it was unintentional. And we can do that either by saying, I didn't mean to, um, it, uh, it was not my intention, or sometimes you can also uh, ask it in the form of a question like, oh, am I late? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so there are various ways, uh, there are various things that go along with apologies and we need to learn that. Uh, okay, apart from excuses and the fact that it was unintentional, sometimes we also add exclamations like, oops, I did it again. Oh dear, I'm sorry, did I hurt you? Oh no, I do apologize, let me help you pick it up. So uh, you will see here the words oops, oh dear, oh no uh, are exclamations. And exclamations since they express feelings, so uh, they frequently are used along with the apologies. Apologies involve feelings. We feel sorry for something that we did wrong. Uh, so uh, exclamations come quite naturally before it. Uh, but look at the last sentence here. Oh no, I do apologize. Let me help you pick it up. Uh, look at the last sentence. Let me help you pick it up. This is an offer. So if we have done something wrong, we shouldn't merely express our apologies. Uh, we shouldn't merely uh, express or utter an exclamatory word. We should actually do some practical step to uh, to help to undo the situation or at least to reduce uh, the negative impact of uh, the mistake. Okay, um, apologies sometimes are not sufficient to pacify the person. Uh, so sometimes we need to use the intensity words 
along with our apologies. So we can simply say, I'm sorry, but sometimes you know this is not enough. We need to add an intensity word with it. So we'll say, I'm very sorry. So the word very actually uh, expresses uh, that I feel sorry quite intensely. You can also say, I'm really very sorry. So you hear you have two intensive words, really and very. And uh, when we express them, we usually emphasize on these words. Like we say, I'm really very sorry. So the word really will be emphasized when I, when I say that. OK, let's look at the last example here. I'm terribly sorry or I'm extremely sorry, I'm awfully sorry. So these adverbs, terribly, extremely, awfully, they will add to the intensity of our apology. And usually it is advisable that we use one of these uh, apology words uh, in order to, uh, to be more polite, in order to express the fact that we deeply feel apologized. Okay, uh, so far we have looked at, receive, uh, looked at how to apologize. But what if someone else apologizes to us? How do we receive an apology? How do we react to it? There are two ways to react to an apology. Either we can graciously accept it, or we can ungraciously accept it. Or oh, there is a third way too. Sometimes we don't simply don't accept it because we think that offense was uh, really very big and uh, we don't want to forgive, so we simply don't accept it. Okay, let's begin with gracious acceptances. Gracious acceptances suggest that the offense was either very small or already forgotten, forgotten or both. For example, if someone says, I'm sorry, in response to that, you can say, that's okay, no problem, don't mention it, it happens, okay? For example, if a student comes late to your class and says, I'm sorry for coming late, you can say, that's okay, no problem, and along with it, you can also add uh, that try to be more careful next time. Uh, but usually for small matters, you don't need to add this try to be careful next time. For small matters, it is okay to say, that's okay, no problem, don't mention it, or simply you say, it happens. Okay. Well, uh, in case someone bumps into you, uh, of course, accidentally, if someone bumps into you, and uh, he says sorry, in response to that, you can also say sorry because uh, maybe he bumped into you because of you, because you got in his way, right? So uh, it is better to apologize in reaction to this. Okay, uh, for some serious matters, Accepting apology is slightly different. So if you think that something is really serious uh, and someone says sorry for it, you are going to graciously accept it by, by these phrases. You can say, it's quite all right. Or you can say, it's not important. Or you can say, don't worry about it. So don't worry about it actually means that although you think it is serious, uh, but you want, to, uh, you want the speaker to feel relieved because at least the speaker uh, is accepting his mistake and the speaker is um, courageous enough to extend an apology. And for really very serious matters, you can say, We'll say no more about it. We'll say no more about it. We'll say no more about it means that uh, it really offended you. So even if someone said sorry about it, you don't want to talk about it. And uh, you, you want to forget about it. 
Okay, now um, sometimes you want to accept an apology, but uh, you want to accept it ungraciously. Uh, if you still feel angry, for example, someone says sorry, you say you should be. Yeah, you should be means that you should be sorry. Um, or you can say, well, that's not good enough. So if you say, well, that's not good enough, it means that merely saying sorry is not enough. You need to undo your action practically or you need to be careful in future. Okay? Um, so sometimes you can also say, don't do it again. So uh, I think uh, the student coming late example fits here better. So if your student comes late and you don't want to accept his apology graciously because he is a habitual latecomer, you would say, don't do it again. Or be, be careful in future. Oh, all right then. Uh, sometimes you can also ungraciously accept an apology by saying, quite right too. Quite right too. This means that, yeah, uh, you are right in saying so. Okay, the next point is really important. English people may sometimes refuse to accept an apology by pretending that it has not been given. But sometimes they may pretend the same thing to show that they don't think the problem was important. Uh, so you have to be really careful. When you listen to the English people, uh, sometimes they can pretend that they have not listened to your apology. And uh, it could be for two opposing reasons. Uh, it could mean that you are not willing to accept the apology but it could also mean exactly the opposite. It could mean uh, that uh, you, you don't think it was really important to talk about it. So let's look at these two sentences. I'm sorry I'm late. If someone says, I'm sorry I'm late, in response to this you say, let's get started, shall we? Let's get started, shall we, suggests that uh, Probably you didn't hear the apology, so you didn't accept it. Or uh, if someone says, I'm sorry I lost it, you can say, I'll go and get another one. This means that you are pretending that you didn't hear the apology, uh, but you are suggesting a practical step here. You are saying, I'll go and get another one. Uh, so. Uh, this means that it was not really important, so uh, the speaker uh, must not feel very apologized, must not feel uh, very sorry about it. Okay, uh, now the last point. I won't recommend that you actually uh, apply it in your real life because it could be really very rude. Uh, sometimes the offense is so grave so serious that you do not want to accept apology at all. And uh, in response to the apology, you simply say, go away, shut up, etc., etc. Uh, but uh, although uh, in some situations you might need to use these expressions, but normally it is very impolite, so I recommend that you better uh, you better not use it. Uh, I can only pray that you never come into such a situation where you have to use it. Okay, so far we have talked about uh, expressing apologies orally. Now we will look at how to write an apology letter. Uh, as I told you earlier, that writing apology letter is not very frequent in our lives. But it is probably one of the most reas uh, important reasons why, uh, why we should write. Uh, very often we make a mistake and if we don't say anything about it, if we don't write anything about it, it is improper. It is inappropriate. 
so the best thing is that uh, being human beings, we all make mistakes. We should accept our mistakes if we have made one, and then we should uh, w we should formally express it through an apology letter, uh, so that it is properly recorded. Here, uh, you would find a template for apology letter. Uh, it's not a sample actually, it's a template. So by template I mean that anything which is written in the curly bracket, if you just look at uh, the, this word here, recipient, you will find there is a curly bracket around it. Dear recipient. So uh, anything which is written inside the curly brackets, uh, it is to be replaced with the name of the recipient. So you see here, uh, you have the curly brackets around you, institution, the team, or company, so you will write any one of these. And here you have sender, here you have email or phone number. Uh, so what I mean to say is that you can actually use the same template of, uh, for apology letter. You can simply replace the names of the recipient and the sender it is good to start with this template, but uh, this is not really enough. Once you feel comfortable uh, writing an apology letter, you should actually start writing uh, an apology letter from scratch. Uh, or maybe you can use it as a sample and you can make slight modifications in the body of, uh, of your letter and then you can uh, write your own apology letter. But the important thing is that uh, you learn this this skill of writing an apology letter. All right. Now I'm not going to read out the whole uh, template. You would find it given in the in the handout as well. And along with this handout, uh, you will also find some practice situations. Uh, suppose that you have to write apology letter uh, for various reasons. Uh, for a late payment, you were supposed to pay uh, someone money on a particular date, but you couldn't make it. Uh, so how would you apologize for a late payment in written form? Uh, well, I've given you s five situations here. But I would appreciate if you could write at least uh, three apology letters based on any two of these situations, whichever situations you feel comfortable with or whichever situations you think are uh, close to reality. Um, you, uh, you should apologize for missing an appointment, apologize for misbehavior, Apologize for damaged property. Maybe you damaged it unintentionally, but even then you have to uh, write a letter of apology for that. Or you need to apologize for postponing an event. Okay, uh, And it is very important. Uh, if, if you have to postpone an event, the people are expecting, they are planning accordingly. If you have to postpone it, uh, have to rearrange it on some later dates, uh, then of course you need to apologize. Okay, uh, now let's look at the summary of what we learned in lecture number five. I'm sorry for this mistake here. It is uh, lecture number five, not four. In lecture five, we learned to differentiate between regrets and apologies, and I, I hope you can uh, recall, you regret when you are not responsible for an action, but you don't like something happened. Something happened, you don't like it, you wish it had not happened, so you feel regret for it. Whereas apologizing means that you have done something wrong, you are aware of it, and you want to uh, you you want to express sorry for it. In lecture number five, we also learned expressions of regrets, 
we also learned expressions of apology and I would once again I would like you to make a phrase book and you should use uh, sorry you should note down all these expressions of regrets and apology under different headings uh, at the top of the notebook for example you can write expressions of regret and underneath it you can write all the useful expressions that can be uh, that can be employed for expressing regrets similarly you can make one column for expressions of apology okay then we also learned how to accept an apology graciously in fact we also learned how to express it uh, how to accept it ungraciously because in some uh, sometimes we have to accept an apology ungraciously uh, sometimes we don't even have to accept an apology because the offense is so great uh, and in the end we also learned a letter letter of apology we learned how to write a formal letter of apology uh, so I expect that in future you would uh, express your apologies and your regrets in English you would feel con confident and comfortable expressing your regrets and apologies not only in your spoken English but also in written discourse and uh, I think you would make it a practice that in future if you commit any mistake as human beings we all do uh, you better uh, you better apologize it in written form by writing it in the form of an apology letter or maybe you can send uh, an email of apology for that so I hope you uh, learned various phrases and I hope you would practice and become more proficient speaker thank you very much